Dogs and citizens of the internet, this is Ren Dog coming at you from yet another edition of Dog Mail, the show where I read out emails that you guys send me from all over the freaking world. In the background, you can see me working on the bio research facility in my Minecraft Feed the Beast series. And in this episode, guys, we have got a ton of dog mails to get through. Remember, if you want to get featured on dog mail, you can email me, you can get in touch on Facebook or on dogcraft.net. All the details are in the description box below. And before I get started, guys, I just want to thank all of you who sent me a dog mail this week. There were literally hundreds of dog mails this week, guys, and I read all of them. And guys, just remember that I'm not able to include all of you in the dog mail show, but please rest assured that I have read all of your freaking dog mails and it has been awesome. All right, guys, let's move on to this week's dog mails. The first one comes from Haven and they have to say the following. Hey, Ren Dog, my name is Haven and my brother and I have been a fan of your videos for a long time. We spend probably 10% of our days watching your videos and let's plays. Our favorites are your Minecraft, FTB, and Euro Truck Simulator. We live in America, so it's always nice to see other places, however we do that. <laughs> so like the mole hole and the artificial Europe in Euro Truck Simulator, that's awesome, dude. Uh, I would just like to suggest to you to tell a story about any sports you participated in during your youth and how that turned out. I'm a gamer like most people here, but I would like people to know all gamers aren't wimps and are usually more of a person than most others. Our skills such as using our minds and thinking creatively are what the world needs right now. And I play sports as well, keeping both my mind and body in shape. I get straight A's in school and never get in trouble at school. Obviously, there's differences with our home though. Ren Thanks Rendog and please take my suggestion into consideration. Your forever fan. Haven. Well, thanks so much for getting in touch, Haven. And uh, you guys might be surprised out there to hear that I actually played quite a few sports when I was at school. Um, I played, let's see, I played tennis, I played cricket, I played football or soccer, I played rugby, and I played squash. Now, I used to go for tennis training, so I was pretty good at tennis. But um, for, <laughs> for the rest of the sports, I was pretty bad. However, I will say that I was the captain of my cricket team at school. Even though it was the, 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 the last team in the school, the sevenths, I was the freaking captain. And unfortunately, we didn't win a game that entire year. But <laughs> I was still the freaking captain. And uh, I also played rugby for, for about five years. And as you guys know, man, rugby is a pretty insanely physical sport. It's a kind of weird sport. I never really understood it, but I, I did enjoy it. I was absolutely terrible. I was a rugby noob. I was also in the last team, but I always ran onto the field with full fervor and full freaking confidence. And I tackled people's asses and I scored some tries and it was freaking sweet. And guys, it's totally true, man. You know, gamers are not just people who sit behind computer screens and play games. I mean, I play a lot of games, obviously, but I do go to gym every day for at least an hour. Um, I'm really, really fit. I try to keep my body in, in shape. I try to keep you know, as fit as possible because a fit body equals a fit mind. So for all of you gamers out there who aren't doing any exercise, get off your buttholes, go do some exercise, and I guarantee that your skill level in whatever game you're playing will increase because your reactions will um, get stronger. Um, your, 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 basically what's happening, right, is, is your blood system is working better, so your brain is functioning better, and basically you will be a better gamer. It's, it's, it's one of the, the biggest pieces of, of advice that you hear out of uh, the esports world, especially out of Korea. You know, pro StarCraft players, they are all incredibly fit human beings. I mean, those guys do uh, loads, loads and loads and loads of gym work. And that is, of course, to keep their brains functioning at maximum capacity. So I really believe, guys, that fitness is really important, you know, to be healthy, to be strong, and to have a, a really solid mind. And speaking about solid minds, you got, you mentioned that uh, gamers and creative thinkers is exactly what the world needs now. And I totally 100% agree with you, man. Imagine if the president of the US or any country in the world. In fact, if all the presidents of the world were en engineers or creatives rather than politicians, imagine how much better this world would be, man. 
there would be no more freaking war. There would be no more unnecessary spending of money. We, oh man, we would probably be living on Mars in 50 years if engineers ran this freaking planet, man. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much for that, Dogmail Haven. And um, yeah, I, I, you know, I like sports. I'm not very good at them. But I dig him. <laughs> All right, guys, let's move on to the next dog mail. And this one comes from Wyas, and he has to say the following Hey, Ren Dog, what's poppin'? I don't think I've heard you say that, lol, but I just thought I would email you to say that I've been enjoying every episode of your, your Let's Play Minecraft series after finding your Season 1, Episode 1, when you were at 28,000 subs, and I'm so happy to see that new Cyberdogs are joining the pack every day. I've shared your videos with some of my friends, and so far they love them and have all subbed, which makes me so freaking happy. I love waking up every day, checking your channel, and seeing that the Cyberdog Nation has grown a small amount. I wanted to congratulate you on all of the positive advice and amazing stories you have shared with us which has helped your channel grow and just wanted to tell you that i love your minecraft lp and hope it never ends p.s for the silkworm gang island it would be awesome if you would make if you made a small underground tunnel or base so that if the worst comes and gary the butthole summons evil minions to destroy the fort you will have an escape route you could put some chests with spare food and tools in the tunnel so you could survive sorry for the extremely long dog mail rain dog but adios Wyaz, well, thank you so much for that dog mail, Wyaz. And you know what, man? It is pretty crazy to think that we have gone from about 28,000 subs all the way up to almost 75,000 subs now. And the Cyberdog Nation is freaking growing on a daily basis. And it is just so awesome, man. You know what? I wake up every morning, I check my YouTube channel, and I got a, you know another 100 or so subs, and I just can't believe it, man. It's just absolutely crazy. And, uh, you know, it's, this nation is building itself, man. It's, it's, it ain't me. It's, it's you guys and me that is, that, that is building this nation up, man. You know, when you guys share your videos with your friends, when you guys send links to my videos to, to your, on your Facebook or on forums or whatever, that helps to grow the nation. And, you know, a lot of you guys uh, email and ask me, how can I help you out, man? I want to help the Cyberdog Nation. What can I do? And the best thing we can do, guys, in this day and age of the internet is just to sh spread the love man share the links you know if if you think that your friends would enjoy my my videos send them some links man and let's grow the cyber dog nation together i mean d i don't even know if this is a if this is a like a achievable goal or even a realistic goal but do you guys think we could get to a hundred thousand subscribers before the end of this year uh, i don't know man <laughs> it seems like a long way off. Another 25,000 subs to go in like four months. I don't know, man. But together we can freaking do it, guys. Let's set a goal. 100,000 subscribers by December 31st of this year. That would be so freaking sweet. Damn, son. <laughs> but thank you so much for your dog mail wires. And, um... Keep it real, my friend. And I actually, I really like your little saying, what's poppin'? <laughs> That's awesome. I might use that. Um, let's move on to the next dog mail, guys. We've got a ton to get through today. This one comes from Ben Dog, and he has the following to say. Hey, Rain Dog. I'll be honest. I've been here since about episode 13 and have seen all of your videos, even, th even, the, even your Diablo series. And I only just watched your latest episode because I've been at my mates all week and I was pleased to see you trolled the new subs with episode 69. Ha ha ha! But I was much the same. When you made your first episode 69 in season 1, I was also in a bad time. My mum was getting really bad with her drinking. Me and my girlfriend had just broken up. My good friend wasn't being nice at all. I was living at my aunt's because my dad was overseas and my mum's drinking. But now, just like you, my life is amazing. I have a new and more amazing girlfriend. I'm taking her to her formal. We're in the same school, but I'm in grade 11 and she's in 12. I help my mum stop drinking completely. My dad is around a lot more. My best friend is a much better friend than the old one. I'm getting my braces off next month, the day before my birthday, and I have gotten a job and have good marks in school and I'm doing work experience all next week. I'm absolutely loving my life. It couldn't be any better. Although mum could quit smoking as well, but we're working on that and you have been a massive part in it Watching your videos and the noob moments make me laugh and hearing your life getting better as well and being with you on this whole journey now the only thing else that would make my life better was if you could follow me back on Twitter so I can send you direct messages from your biggest fan and friend and cyber dog in Australia 
Honestly, if you weren't there today, I wouldn't be the person I am today. And I absolutely love being able to relate to you. I love real Goxie. And thank you. Thank you so freaking much. I would also love if you even put this on dog mail. Anyway, sorry for the extremely long message. Very kind regards. Ben Dog, a.k.a. Barty Doggy 353. Well, thank you so much for that dog mail, uh, Ben Dog. And you know what? Your, your dog mail is a testament to what we have been talking about in, you know, on my channel in these shows for the, the past year. Since, my, since Granny Dog passed away, man, we have been talking about how things inevitably do get better. Even though in the moment it feels like the entire world is collapsing on your ass, you know, eventually things get better, man. You climb that staircase, you get to the top, and when you get to the top, there is a freaking block of diamond glowing in the sun, and life is good again. And you know, Ben Dog, your dog mail should be an inspiration to all the other cyber dogs watching this who are perhaps in a bad place in their life, or you know, something isn't going quite as, as good as they would like in their life. Things get better, people. Things get freaking better. You just got to stick in there and you got to set yourself goals and you got to reach for those goals, man. You just, you can't just give up and think that things will never get better because then that's when ultimate failure ends, man. And that's when the staircase falls down and, and completely explodes. That's when, some, that's when a freaking creeper gets up on your staircase and kaplams himself and then it's all over, man. You got to set yourself goals. You got to keep focused and you have to always freaking believe, my friends, that things are going to get better because you know what? In testament to what Ben Dog has told you and in testament to my own life, things have gotten better for both of us and things will also get better for you guys. And for those of you guys who are already at the top of the staircase, we are coming to join you, my friends. <laughs> All right, guys, let's move on to the next dog one, dog mail. <laughs> and this one comes from Avery and they have the following to say. Dear Rain Dog, I've been with you since season one of your Let's Play MC series. I've enjoyed it a lot and gives me time away from my life and school. There is an OCD problem I've been waiting for you to fix since season two. If you look at Mole City from the Mole Hole, the left minor road that goes into the Richie Rich district, that's what I call it, lols, one of the entrances is larger than the rest. Well, gotta go. Have fun playing Minecraft. Thanks for your time. P.S. Thanks for making vids. It is also very funny to watch you die, lols. P.P.S. I'm a male. The name is confusing to some people. Your best MC fan, Avery. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Avery, for clearing up your, you know, your gender. <laughs> and uh, happy to hear that you're a guy. <laughs> uh, and thanks so much for getting in touch. And well spotted, man. You have eyeballs of the hawk. I don't know how you spotted that that minor road in Mole City has got a bigger entrance, but I'm definitely going to go back there and fix that up. Well done for spotting that. And it it's kind of worrying that you like watching me die, but um, it's understandable because uh, it is pretty lols when I, <laughs> when I bite the dust. Even after 216 episodes of Minecraft, I still freaking die. I, what is up with that anyway, man? <laughs> All right, Avery, thank you so much for getting in touch. But guys, let's move on to the last dog mail for today's episode and this one comes from Sean and he has the following to say. Hey Rendog, I'm a huge fan of you and your videos. You're one of the first people I subscribe to on my channel and I have serious and you have seriously inspired me for a lot of the stuff I do in my Minecraft worlds. But the main thing I wanted to talk about is that school is starting tomorrow by the time I'm writing this and I hope you can help me with something. So there's this girl I've been friends with since like kindergarten and I think I really like her and I wanted your advice on how to ask her to be my girlfriend. I'm asking you this because you're, you're one of the people I think can help me and I really trust you even though I've never actually met you. But anyways, I really hope you can help me out with this. Please respond or as the subject entitles, answer it in a dog mail. But anyways, thanks Ren Dog, you're the best. Sorry for the long email, Sean. Well, Sean, um, I think that, uh, <laughs> I think we can all agree, guys and girls, that uh, relationships and even starting relationships is some complicated jazz, man. It is, it is really, really difficult and it is really, really hard. And you know what? Um, in my experience, one of the hardest things in the entire freaking world, and even now that I'm older, but since I started being interested in girls all the way back when I was a kid, up until now, one of the hardest things in the world is talking to girls, man. I, for some reason, it's just, it, it's just like the most insanely overwhelming, uh, f like fear and anxiety that a guy gets when he wants to talk to a girl, you know? 
But I think I've got, a, I've got a little bit of advice for you that might be able to help you. Well, I've got two pieces of advice that might be able to help you. Number one, um, and this is, a, this is actually something that, that I have kept, uh, that has kept me uh, inspired on many, 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 many occasions. Now, I'm sure that Sean and most of you out there have maybe, let's say, acted in the play or had to do a speech in front of people. Maybe it was just in front of your family at Thanksgiving or Christmas or something like that. And the moments before that actual speech or the moments before you go onto that stage to act in that play, think about the anxiety that you're feeling in that moment. Like the absolute terror that you're going to forget your words or that you're not going to be able to know what to say or that, you know, you're going to fart or that something really crazy is going to happen and you're going to look like an absolute idiot in front of all these people. Now, fast forward 30 seconds to when you are actually on that stage delivering those lines or standing up in, in front of your family making that, that Thanksgiving or Christmas speech and think about the confidence that you feel in that moment. Think about how suddenly it's so easy to do this, how suddenly all of the lines that you had to remember for the play are coming in and you are acting or you are speaking in front of people and it feels so natural and it feels so normal and it feels so easy and all of that anxiety that you felt before going onto the stage or standing up in front of that, those people seems silly and you, you think to yourself, why did I feel so anxious to do this? This, is, this isn't so bad. And you know what? Speaking to girls is exactly the same as that, my friend. The anxiety and the fear and the terror that you feel before going up to a girl to tell her that you like her and you'd like to be her, her boyfriend suddenly evaporates the moment that you actually just do it. That you actually just take the step, walk toward the girl, look her in the eyes, talk to her, tell her how you feel and suddenly all of that anxiety just disappears. And you know what the, the really good news is? Whether she says yes or whether she says no is irrelevant, right? Because suddenly all of that weight, all of that freaking fear and anxiety that you had about speaking to her is gone. Even if she said no, that doesn't matter. That's, you know, that, that, that's, a, that's just a blow to the ego, right? But it's not the end of the freaking world, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, <laughs> so that's a, a sort of mindset that I've always um, kept to myself when doing anything in life, not just talking to girls, but even, you know, like when I went to, to Comic-Con in London this year, I was freaking terrified, man. I was so nervous to go there and to meet cyber dogs. And, you know, I was so absolutely petrified that I, you know, I don't know that, that everyone would hate me and that people would throw tomatoes at me. I actually had that fear for some reason. But the moment that I was there and the moment that I met the cyber dogs there, every, all of that fear and all of that anxiety just disappeared and I was so freaking happy, man. Um, and there's another little bit of advice that I want to give you, Sean. You know, once you've gotten over your actual anxiety and your, your fear to actually just approach her, which is what you should freaking do, here's another little bit of advice for you. The f I, now, now I'm going to talk about my first ever girlfriend, right? Now, I was probably about, I don't know, I was like 10 or 11 years old, right? So I guess you can't really call her a girlfriend, but, you know, we were girlfriend and boyfriend in the loosest sense of the term because I asked her if she wanted to be my girlfriend and she said yes. And so, you know, we were boyfriend and girlfriend. It doesn't matter that we were kids. That, that, that part's irrelevant. Now, something that I, that I learned from that experience and that I've always kept um, going all the way through all of my relationships in my life is that... It's really, really easy to, to use words to impress a girl or to get a girl to be interested in you. But it's so much more meaningful if you show her what you feel for her with actions, right? Because think about it, right? Any guy in the world could just walk up to her and say, Hey baby, you're really, really hot. Do you want to be my girlfriend? Anyone can do that, man. And you know what? Tons of guys do. I mean, in this world, there are two types of guys, right? If you go to a party or a, or a club or whatever, or a house party or whatever, you always see the guys on the one side of the party who, who don't have girls, you know, are standing there wanting to be with girls. And you have the guys that have the girls. And the guys that have the girls, they have them because they have the courage and the guts just to walk up to girls and, and speak to them. 
That's that's the difference, man. I was always on the I was always in the uh, in the corner of the room wishing that I had a, a girlfriend. Um, I was always that guy, and I always knew though that if I if I literally just like did it, I would probably get a girlfriend. But for some reason, I couldn't get past the the, the anxiety that I was talking about earlier. But the most important thing that I'm trying to say, Sean, is to use actions instead of words. And the way that I did this with the, this very, very first girlfriend many, many years ago is that I knew, because we were friends and I, I sort of knew her quite well, I knew that she absolutely loved shells, like seashells, right? And we were on a holiday because my, my family and her family were friends and we were on a holiday at the beach and we were all walking together in a group and uh, I was sort of walking with her and talking with her and stuff like that. And we were looking for shells in the shallows of the sea. And I saw a giant cowrie shell. Now, cowrie shells are a really rare shell. Well, in, 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 in this part of South Africa that we were at, it, it's very, very rare because they get broken up in the surf. South Africa has very rough seas, so uh, whole shells hardly ever survive. And I found this giant cowrie shell and I ran over to it and I picked it up and, and I was the happiest guy ever. It was beautiful, man. It, looked, it looks like a tiger. It has like tiger um, stripes and stuff all over it. It's so, it's so awesome. Man. It, it was such a beautiful shell. And I picked it up and I was like, yes, this is mine. This is the most awesome shell ever. And I remember her looking at it and she was just, I guess she was jealous. You know, I, she really, really wanted that shell. She really, really wanted it so, so badly. But I kept it because, you know, I was 10, man. It was my freaking shell. <laughs> but a couple of years later, um, I, I was in the same place as you. I really liked her and I, I wanted to be her boyfriend. And I remember that I sat down and I thought to myself, how can I really show her, you know, that I care about her? And I thought about the shell and I'd kept the shell in, in my like secret little box in my room. And, um, I, I went to her house. I asked my mom if, if I could go and visit her and I went to her house and I went to her room and I gave her the shell and I said to her, do you want to be my girlfriend? And I gave her the shell and I showed her, you know, that I understood what she really, really liked and that she really, really liked shells. And because she knew that I had found the shell in the sea, that it was naturally found and that it meant a lot to me, it really, really meant a lot to her. And um, it was a really, really good lesson for me that I learned. And it's, a, it's something that I've always taken through uh, my entire life since then with regards to relationships. So my advice to you, Sean, is to figure out something. If you know her, if she's a friend of yours, you know what she likes, right? You know the things that she's into. So show her that you care enough about her that you know about her and give her something or do something for her that represents one of the things that she's really into. And what you got to try and do is make sure that, you know, you're in a, a nice safe environment. Don't have any of her friends around. Don't have, have any of your friends around. You know, take her to a movie. Take her for a, a Coke at the mall. Somewhere where she will feel completely comfortable, right? And she won't feel awkward and she won't feel pressured at all. And present her with whatever it is that you have come up with that represents your knowledge of her and the fact that you care about her. And just be honest, man. Just look her in the eyes and tell her, look, I think you're beautiful. I think you're amazing. And I, I, I really would love to be your boyfriend. And if she says yes, then that is awesome. If she says no, it doesn't matter, my friend. You know why? Because you managed to get through your anxiety, through your fear to ask her. And what would you rather do? Would you rather spend the next year, two years, wishing that you, that you could be her boyfriend? Or know for certain that she either will say yes or she, or she either will say no. And if she says no, then it's perfect closure for you because then you can just move on. And you can just, you know, Go, do an, go find someone else. <laughs>
<laughs> but anyway, uh, Sean, I, that was a freaking long ass bit of advice, but I really hope that that helped you. And uh, it was really nice actually to reminisce back to my earlier days of courting. <laughs> so thank you so much for your dog mail. Guys, that is the end of today's episode. If you enjoyed it, you know what to do, man. You hit that freaking like button. And remember, if you want to get a dog mail featured on this show, you can get in touch via email, Facebook, dogcraft.net. All the details are in the description box below. Guys, this has been Rendok reading your dog mails. Can't wait to see you next week where we will read some more. See you in the next video, my friends. Goodbye.